dear students welcome to our solar jam class in the last class uh, we studied about some important lymphoid organs okay so just uh, remember that uh, all the points see the lymphoid organs are classified into two major categories primary lymphoid organs or central lymphoid organs and the second one is secondary lymphoid organs otherwise called peripheral lymphoid organs Okay. And in the last class, we studied two important secondary lymphoid organs. Okay, two important secondary lymphoid organs and two important primary lymphoid organs. Understand? See the lymph node and spleen. These two are the important secondary lymphoid organs. Understand? The last class we studied. Then thymus and bone marrow. These two are the important primary lymphoid organs. So in the last class we studied about the structure of all these lymphoid organs. Okay, and we studied some important lymphoid tissues also. Okay, in the last class we studied about some important lymphoid tissues also. Example in the pears, patches, tonsils, malt, gut, belt, these are some of the lymphoid tissues. Okay, my students, okay. Today we are going to study about two more topics. The first one is lymphoid cells. Cells involved in our lymphoid system or immune system is called lymphoid cells. Understand of you? So today we are going to study about the lymphoid. First, we are going to study about lymphoid cells. See, you all know there are three types of red cells are present in our body: WBC, RBC, and platelets. Okay, RBC, WBC, and platelets. There are five types of WBCs are there. Okay, lymphocyte, monocyte, basophil, eosinophil, and neutrophil. These are the five types of WBC. So all the five types of WBCs and RBC and the platelets. So all these cells are involved in our immune system. Involved in our immune system. So first we are going to study about the structure of lymphocyte. Structure of lymphocyte. Okay. See. <laughs> 20 to 30 percentage of the WBC molecule is lymphocyte. Okay, so lymphocyte, monocyte, basophil, neutrophil, is not. These are the five types of WBC. Here, 20 to 30 percentage of the WBC molecules are this lymphocyte. So, the first point is the lymphocyte consists of a large nucleus. A large nucleus is present in the center region of the lymphocyte. Understand? And the nucleus is surrounded by cytoplasm. The amount of cytoplasm is very little. So the size of the nucleus is very big. Size of the cytoplasm is very small. Understand? So this is the first point about this lymphocytes. Understand? Okay? Then there are two types of lymphocytes are present in our body. One is B lymphocyte and the second one is T lymphocyte. B lymphocyte and T lymphocyte. Here the bone of the lymphocyte, both B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes are produced inside the bone marrow. Produced inside the bone marrow. You all know bone marrow is one of the examples for the primary lymphoid organ. Okay. So the both lymphocytes are produced inside the bone marrow, but the B cells only mature inside the bone marrow. So the production and maturation of this B lymphocyte takes place inside the bone marrow. But the production of T lymphocyte takes place in the bone marrow, but their maturation takes place inside the thymus. Okay, so thymus is also another example for the primary lymphoid organ. So I hope you are understood this point. So there are two types of lymphocytes are present: B lymphocyte and T lymphocyte. Here the production and maturation of B lymphocyte takes place inside the bone marrow, but the production of B T lymphocyte takes place inside the bone marrow, but their maturation is inside the thymus. So I hope you are going to call this part. Then next one is say when a pathogenic microorganism or when an antigen is contact with our B lymphocyte, okay, with our B lymphocyte, immediately the B lymphocyte is activated. Immediately the B lymphocyte is activated because the outer surface of the B lymphocyte a protein is there. This protein is called the sucker protein. So listen to us here. See, this is the B lymphocyte. Just imagine this is the B lymphocyte. So outer surface of this B lymphocyte, your protein molecule is there, this is called a receptor protein. Okay. So when this receptor protein coming to contact with an antigen or a foreign particles, immediately this B lymphocyte is activated. The B lymphocyte is activated. So this activated B lymphocyte immediately produces plasma cells. Produce one more cell, this is called plasma cells. 
these plasma cells produce more amount of antibodies immediately the plasma cells producing more amount of antibody that's like you so so you have to this point when a b lymphocyte okay is contact with the antigen the receptor protein present on the outer surface of the b lymphocyte is making a contact and immediately the b lymphocyte is activated the activated b lymphocyte is producing plasma cells and plasma cells produce more amount of antibodies so these antibodies is getting ready to fight with the antigen so many students then one more important point some b lymphocyte do not produce any antibody they do not produce any antibody and they become monocytes okay so the b lymphocyte which are not producing antibodies became memory cell that's a few then the t lymphocyte the second type of lymphocyte is called t lymphocyte or maybe already i told you b lymphocyte and t lymphocyte then the t lymphocyte do not produce any antibody it will not produce any antibody under any situation and there are these t lymphocytes are in two form instead of body these t lymphocytes are in two form one form name is called t helper killer cells and the second is called t helper cell t killer cell and the t helper cell here this t killer cell is killing all the damaged or infected cells present in our body destroying all the damaged or the infected cells of the body then this t helper cell is releasing a chemical like substance name of this chemical like substance is called cytokines so this cytokines helps the b cell to activate helps the b cell to activate so say the previous last point the t lymphocyte do not produce any antibody at any under any situation and this t lymphocytes are in two form one is t helper cell and t killer cell Here, T helper cell are releasing a chemical-like substance which is called cytokines, and these cytokines helps the B cell to activate, and the T killer cell destroying all the damaged or the infected cells of our body. Understand, my dear students? So that's all about the lymphocytes. So now we have completed one important cells of our immune system, the lymphocytes. Okay, very good one question sir is there, and this one after very important five more question. Question very short, sorry. Now we are going to study about some two more questions. Very very important two more question. The first one is antigen. First one is antigen. See, the antigen means the substance which are are reacting with the antibody or the product of our immune system is called antigen. the substance which are react with the antibody is called antigen okay then immunogen second one is immunogen both the antigen is only other is called immunogen okay but the term the definition is different antigen is only other is called immunogen but the definition is different here immunogen means the substance which can produce immune response it is called immunogen that means when this antigen enter inside the body immediately our body produces the immune response Okay, so for the production of immune response, one substance is needed. That substance is called what? Immunogen. It's called immunogen. So now we have completed two tumor question and the second immunogen. Then the third tumor question is reptox. Reptox means the non-immunogenic antigen. Okay, non-immunogenic substance, but it can react with the product of our immune system. But it can react with the product of our immune cells of our immune system. It is called reptox. Let's see that again. The next two words is called epitope. Listen very carefully. Epitope is the active part of an antigen, and it is an antigenic determinant. So listen. See, this is just imagine this is an antigen. So the outer surface of the antigen, the special part is there. These parts are called antigenic determinants. These parts are called antigenic determinants. That's the meaning. So the outer surface of the antigen only the antigenic determinants are there. So these antigenic determinants are otherwise called epitope. Antigenic determinants are otherwise called epitope. So epitope is the active part of the antigen. The next one is parat. Parathrope is the active part of an antibody which making a contact with the epitope. So just imagine this is an antibody. This is an antibody. 
So this region is called paraplatelet because this paraplatelet region only making a contact with the sandwich chain in this epitope region. So this region is called paraplatelet. So paraplatelet means anti part of antibody making a contact with the antigen or epitope or antigenic determinants. Understand my students? So these are the some important two molecules: antigen, immunogen, hepatin, epitope, paraplatelet. This epitope paraplatelet sometimes it can be asked for differential question. The next one is types of antigen. Antigens are classified into two important types. One is exogenous antigen, then second one is endogenous antigen. Here exogenous antigen means what are the antigens entering inside the body from outside is called exogenous antigen. Example for this exogenous antigen like organisms, pollens, pollutants, some drugs, chemicals, these are the example for the exogenous antigen. So antigen which are entering inside the body from outside is called exogenous antigen. Then next one is endogenous antigen. The antibodies which are produced inside our body, sorry, the antigen which are produced inside our body is called endogenous antigen. Next example, blood group antigen. Okay, blood group antigen is the example for the endogenous antigen. So this is a two marks. Types of antigen. There are two types of antigens are there: exogenous and endogenous antigen. Okay, exogenous means antigen entering inside the body from outside. Endogenous antigen means antigens formed inside the body. It is called endogenous antigen. Understand, my dear students? Then next we are going to study about one very very important primary question: structure of antibody. Okay, and one diagram also we are going to prove. It is very important for two more questions. Listen very carefully. Antibodies are otherwise called immunoglobulin. Here I told you antigens are otherwise called immunogen. Like that, antibodies are otherwise called immunoglobulin. And these antibody molecules are produced by our immune system. Sorry, B lymphocytes. B lymphocytes are for immune system. So the B lymphocytes only produce and responsible for the production of these antibodies. So whenever microorganism or the foreign particles or the antigens entering inside the body, immediately the B lymphocyte produces here different types of protein molecules. These protein molecules are called antibody. These protein molecules are called antibody. So whenever pathogenic microorganism enter inside the body, this B lymphocyte is releasing this protein molecule. These protein molecules are called antibodies. Understand that you understand that? So antibodies are produced or exposed to antigen. When the antigen is produced, in turn immediately antibodies are produced. Okay? Then this antibody molecule, the structure of the antibody molecule was first explained by two scientists. Their name is Edelman and Porter. Edelman and Porter. So these two people really first explained the structure of antibody. Understand? Then based on the structure and function. Physiological properties based based on the physiological properties and biochemical properties, the antibody molecules are classified into five types. Antibody molecules are classified into five types: IgG, IgG, IgM, IgD, and IgE. So these are the five types of antibody molecules. Most of my students, I hope you all understood all these points. Now, all clear? See. Actually, antibody molecule, the shape of the antibody molecule is Y shape. Antibodies are Y shape molecule. And it is made up of four polypropylene chain. Each and every antibody molecule is made up of four polypropylene chain. Two chains are very small chains, so they are called light chain. And two polypropylene chains are very big chains, so they are called heavy chain. So there are two light chain and two heavy chains are present in a single antibody molecule. So this is one light chain, this is second light chain. This is the one heavy chain and this is the second heavy chain. Understand of you? Then the molecular weight of this light chain is 25,000 Dalton. The molecular weight of the light chain is 25,000 Dalton. And the light chain is made up of 214 amino acid molecules. 214 amino acid molecules are present in the light chain. Then the molecular weight of this heavy chain, this heavy chain is 50,000 dot and 50,000 dot and, and this heavy chain is made up of 450 amino acids. 450 amino acids. Understand me, dear students? So I hope you all understood all these points. Then, disulfide bond. 
this body is playing a very important role in the structure of antibody because the line chain, one line chain is attached with one heavy chain by a single disulfide bond. Here also this line chain is attached with this heavy chain by a disulfide bond. Listen a few. Then both heavy chains are also connected by a disulfide. So the connection between the between one light chain and one heavy chain and the connection between two heavy chains are by this disulfide bond. Understand me, dear students? Okay. Then next part. Each and every antibody molecule has two end. One end is called end terminal end. This end is called end terminal end and this end is called C terminal end. N terminal end and C terminal end. Okay, then both sorry the single antibody molecules has two important arrangements. Okay, so one region is called variable region. So this is the variable region, this is also variable region, and this is the constant region. Okay, so the top region is called variable region and the bottom region is called constant region. Instead of you understand? So, in variable regions, some variations are there in the amino acid molecule. They told it is fully made up of amino acids. Okay, fully made up of amino acids. So, some variations or differences present in the in some region of the antibody molecule. So, that region is called variable region. And in this region, there is no variations or there is no differences in the amino acids arrangement. So, this region is called constant. So this is the variable region and this region is called constant region. This region is called constant region. Must have made students. Then listen to the next point very carefully. See one variable region of the light chains, variable region of the both light chains, and variable region of the both heavy chains, variable region of the both heavy chains togetherly forming an antigen binding site. Together we forming an antigen binding site. So the variable region of both light chain and variable region of both heavy chains together we forming an antigen binding site in that antigen binding site only the antigens are fit. Okay, here I told you. So this antigen determinants. Okay, so in this region only the antigen determinants are fit. The antigen and antibody making a contact in this region. Okay, so this is the region. Students. So, I hope you all understood the structure of antibody diagram is there. This is very important for Kumar Mosti. Understand? Okay. For greater, dear students, next we are going to study about two, three more questions. So, the first one is binding force of antigen antibody reaction. So, here antibody means the protein molecule produced inside of our body. Antigen is the foreign molecules that are entering inside the body from outside is called antigen. Okay. So, the antibody which are produced inside our body should destroy or eliminate the antigens. Okay. So, in between the antigen and the antibody, some reactions are takes place. Finally, the antibody destroys the antigens. Okay. So, the force of antigen antibody reaction is determined by three factors. Okay. So, just imagine this is the antibody, this is the antigen. So, this antigen and antibodies are making a contact. Finally, this antibody eliminating and destroying this antigen. So, the force of reaction between this antigen and antibody is determined by three factors. The first factor name is called closeness. That means the antigen and antibody should fit very closely. Okay, closely tight. Then only the reaction becomes very strong. Okay, if any cap is there, the reaction is very slow. So the closeness is the first reason or first factor determining the force of reaction between antigen and antibody. The second one is non-covalent bond. Okay, so non-covalent bond is formed between antibody and antigen. Okay, so the bond should be non-covalent bond. Example for non-covalent bond, hydrogen bond, electrostatic bond. So these are the example for the non-covalent bond. Of you. Then the last one is affinity of antibody. Affinity means strength of antibody, power of antibody. So these three factors will be determining the force of reaction between the antigen and the antibody. 
understand my dear students so so this is one of the very important remark question yes very simple easy question so there is a reaction is present between the antigen and the antibody so the faults of this reaction is determined by these three factors closeness non covalent group and affinity of antibody then next one is types of antigen antibody reactions next three more question types of reactions okay see in between the antigen and antibody there are four types of reactions are there four types of reactions are there the first reaction is called precipitin reaction first reaction is called a precipitin reaction which is very carefully when a soluble antigen is reacting with antibody immediately one precipitate is formed immediately a precipitate is formed so this reaction is called precipitin reaction this reaction is called a precipitin reaction and antibody which are which are bringing this precipitin formation is called precipitin listen very carefully so the first reaction is called precipitin reaction here when a soluble antigen is making a contact with the antibody immediately a precipitate is formed so this reaction is called a precipitin reaction the antibody which are involved in this precipitin reaction is called precipitin then second reaction is called agglutination reaction second reaction is called agglutination reaction here agglutination reaction means when a particular antigen react with the antibody immediately a agglutination is formed the particulate antigen and react with the antibody immediately agglutination is formed okay so this reaction is called agglutination reaction so this reaction is called agglutination reaction and the antibody which bring this agglutination reaction is called agglutin is called agglutin understand the third reaction is called opsonisis here one substance is formed called the opsin opsin your substance is produced it is called opsin so this opsin enhances the antigen or enhances the antigen okay all the antigens are coated by this opsin and it is covered with this opsin finally the antigen is destroyed so this reaction is called opsonization reaction and the last reaction is called nucleosis reaction nucleosis reaction so in this reaction the harmful effect of microorganism or the harmful effect of the antigen is eliminated or re sorry or reduced or neutralized by the antibody so this reaction is called nucleosis reaction question of you so the harmful effect of the microorganism or antigen is eliminated or neutralized or reduced by the antibody so this and this reaction is called neutralization reaction and now this antibody is called antitoxin antibody is called antitoxin understand my students so now we complete one important remark to see types of antigen antibody reactions okay so today we have completed two important five mark question what is the structure of leucocyte and the structure of antibody these two are important two mark question answers and here some sorry these two are important five mark questions and some two mark questions also studied and in the video we have done a bit of that and we have studied three three mark questions the first one is types of antigen second one is binding codes of antigen antibody reaction and the types of antigen antibody reaction must and very students so today is a try to complete all these questions so all the questions are very very easy and simple question so study well we will meet in the next class thank you